fucking moron! <laughs> hey! Moron! Well, good morning. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Taco Tuesday. We are 58 days away from kickoff of the 2024 season and who knows what we're going to get this season we just don't know and we're literally about two weeks away from the dallas cowboys reporting for training camp i feel so good so excited and all that it's been what we've always gotten now let me let me be clear let me tell you the life cycle of a dallas cowboys season it ends in January, unfortunately, with the playoff loss. We then hear how bad everything is. That Mike McCarthy is on the hot seat. That Dak Prescott, this is his last go round. That things are going to change. Then we have free agency that comes about. In which case, the Cowboys are on vacation and do nothing early on in free agency. We hear about all these super teams out there like the Denver Broncos when they got Russell Wilson and Randy Gregory or the New York Jets that get Aaron Rodgers along with all these other people or things or, uh, you know, typically the Washington Commanders, which have been the offseason champion literally probably about 50 percent of the time because they literally sign, spend more money in free agency than anybody only to see these teams fail. Be that as it may, we hear how bad the Dallas Cowboys are, how bad the quarterback is, how bad the Joneses are at building a roster, and how much they suck. Then comes along the draft. The draft goes around, and of course, the Cowboys, they sucked at drafting. You know, they're, they're a C-plus, a B-minus at best, that they are did nothing really to address the needs that they have, and so on. And then lo and behold... About OTA time, the narrative starts to change that all of a sudden the Cowboys roster is better than what people have said it was. When you were listening to them before, you literally heard them say that, you know, you'd think that the Cowboys were merry sisters of the poor, that they literally were the worst team in football, that everything about them stinks. Lo and behold, by the time training camp is over, they will be a Super Bowl contender. That's the way it always goes when you're the Dallas Cowboys. Literally, they will kill you all off season until the season gets here. Now it's Super Bowl aspirations. They're a Super Bowl contender. They're a Super Bowl favorite. Nothing short of the Super Bowl is a failure. And I don't know how that is if we didn't do anything to help ourselves. Be that as it may. Y'all are some cruel mother humpers out there. I messed up my morning video yesterday and I was showing the Zeke Elliott clip. And let me let me go through and get Zeke Elliott up in here again. And the comments from people. This is the you know, Zeke workout. It, it's not an off season without a Zeke Elliott. Look, look, drop the hips. Hop, 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 drop the hips. Hop, hop. Pop, pop, get over there. Hop, pop, pop. I, I, I love I love now get over there, get over there, get over there, up, 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 up. Drop, 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 drop. Mom, mom, mom. I mean, look. Mama, 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 mama. Okay. Get over there, mama. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we can watch that one more time. But the comments from people are just stone cold. All this for 50 yards. <clears throat> All this for 2.2 yards per carry. That's great and all. I love me some Zeke, but he's got 3.3 yards of carry this season. We better hope Rico finds lightning in a bottle. I've been fooled before. I won't be fooled again. Please don't enable this same thing every year. Damn. 
I wish these would stop. Translate to zero. Wow. That, 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 damn. Damn. So, cowboy fans are like, yeah, okay, whatever. But here's what I will say. Here's what I'm going to say. Last year was a disaster at running back. Let, let's be clear here. Last year was a disaster at running back. Um, and it's not... It wasn't a disaster for the whole offense. It was a disaster for running it. It changed what they had to do. Because I keep, you know, standing on my soapbox. Actually, I need to get, a, that's what I need to do. I need to actually get an old soapbox and stand on it. That's, I need to go to an antique store and find one. But standing on my soapbox here, I will say that Mike McCarthy is not the run heavy guy. Which is part of the reason why I can see why they would say, you know, he would say, you know, if I get Derrick Henry, then that means I'm going to have to use Derrick Henry. And maybe he didn't necessarily want to have him. But, you know, in short yardage, we had issues. Tony Pollard was not the guy that was going to, and contrary to us taking Deuce Vaughn um, out there um, in training camp and having him in short yardage, we didn't have a guy that when you just need six inches, you got six inches. Zeke Elliott is not going to be breaking a lot of big plays and things, and people will look at his numbers from last year. But remember, they didn't have any passing game whatsoever. Their offensive line was shit. But because the Cowboys have a more dynamic offense that's going to spread the field, it will end up being that he'll play better than he did last year. And if you remember seeing Tony Pollard trying to truck a guy on the goal line and getting stopped, that'll be a Zeke Elliott touchdown. That would definitely be one. And he's also a good blocker in um, pass coverage. So these are things that are going to help. I'm not going to say that he's going to be a 1,500-yard rusher because he's not. But that's not what Mike McCarthy's offense is predicated on. They will use the pass to help set up the run. You can believe that. You can believe that. And so that's where I think I'm okay. I would like to have another guy who would be like a really good speed back that can do what we did with Tony Pollard. But unfortunately, the Cowboys miscalculated with their position flex, thinking that Tony Pollard could actually be a between-the-tackles running back when he just never was. So that is, of course, a big problem, a big issue, but we'll see where it goes. But remember, with as bad as our running game was last year, we still score more points than anybody else during the season. So take that to the bank. Now, something that's kind of interesting to me, a little discussion here, um, and, and maybe I'll use some of this ammunition tomorrow when I'm on the Dan Salio show. But listening to the conversation on Speak, of course, Shady McCoy is the ultimate homer. Discussion. Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts. We've got, of course, you know, Philly 500. Oh, I'll take Jalen Hurts anytime. Uh, Philly, uh, excuse me, Dan Salio, literally saying, Dak Prescott on the Eagles, they win the Super Bowl. Top five quarterback in his mind. Hurts 15. This discussion, and this is where it's kind of crazy because you can't. If you look at the last couple of years, who are you taking on offensive line? You taking the Eagles or the Cowboys? taking the Eagles wide receiver core you're probably taking the Eagles tight ends although you can look and say Ferguson probably will get past Dallas Goddard this year but in the last couple of years who are you taking you're gonna have to say the Eagles so if you're looking at an Eagle team that's loaded versus a Cowboys team that a couple of years ago, we literally had nobody other than CeeDee Lamb starting as a wide receiver that had caught an NFL touchdown. So be that as it may, James Jones bit slaps the notion of Jalen Hurts being better than Dak Prescott. Listen to this. Are we talking to player or are we talking to team success? The player, sir. That's There's important. nothing that Jalen Hurts does better than Dak Prescott at the quarterback spot but the read option. He don't throw better than him. Mm -hmm. He don't throw with anticipation better than him. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, this dude was 5,000 yards last year, led the NFL in touchdowns. Pat, there's nothing Jalen Hurts except running the read option and maybe the tush push that he does better than Dak Prescott. Whoa. And I like Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts is going to be a really good quarterback in this league. But Dak Prescott, at this point right now in the National Football League, does everything better than Jalen Hurts at that quarterback spot. Everything. Hmm. Does he win better? Is it a team goal or are we talking about a quarterback? Because cause, cause I, I put, I put winning on the team. Because you need defenses and all that to win. So I don't necessarily just put that on the quarterback. We elevate a little bit of that, 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 that or remove some of that. So we tell them like, that quarterbacks don't get judged on their wins. You talking oh, about oh, just oh, in the playoffs. Quarterbacks don't get judged on their wins and what they do in the playoffs and all that? I'm just asking. This ain't a running back. Not, not, not when you ask this, me. This ain't no deep back or no linebacker. We talking about the quarterback. The quarterback. Maybe, some, maybe somebody else, but not when you ask me who's the better player. You know what it is, though, Joy? I learned it about, about James Jones. Did you learn Shady? I'm interested. Because we became good friends on this show. And I learned that. Good to see. He loves a guy like Aaron Rodgers. I, right. I couldn't figure out why. why? And I know Special. why. He likes this, this how it looks. <laughs> he don't care about the results. Mm. He don't care if you play 20-something years and get all this hype. Mm. You win in the regular season to the po- postseason. We can't find that quarter. We've been here. Yeah. So when I look at James, it's like, now I understand you now. Yeah, that's that's cool. Right? You, can, you can understand me. Number one, Dak Prescott don't even look like Aaron Rodgers, so mm. let's get that out the way. Out the two guys. But he I'm looks way better than Jalen Hurts at the quarterback <laughs> spot. And that's what the MVP and Cam Newton is talking about. At the quarterback spot, when we're talking about how you play throwing this football, a guy that has won the division last year, won 12 games, 12 games, 12 games. And yes, you, you could talk about him, what he's done in the playoffs, but what he has done and winning in the regular season okay. and how he plays the quarterback position, there's nothing that Jalen Hurts does better than Dak Prescott unless it's the read option. Go ahead, that is it. Um, I disagree with Cam. Okay. That's kind of interesting. So let me ask this. Okay. Let me ask this question. Actually, I'm pulling up. Let me pull up both stats here. Um, here's where I will say that... <clears throat> It's next to impossible to compare that to apples to oranges. Okay, so hypothetically, just follow me for a second, because I, I, I said this, I think, last night um, without having the numbers in front of me, right? So the Cowboys play against Green Bay, and they get beat, right? In that game, Dak Prescott, has three TD passes and two interceptions. Has 403 yards and an 89 rating. Okay? And they lose. They lose. Three TDs, two interceptions. Um, I don't see what's complete. Oh, completion percentage. Completion percentage. 68.3. Right? 68.3, 403 yards, three TDs, two interceptions. And that guy sucked. All right. Let's flip this over. Trevor Lawrence. I actually was wrong about Trevor Lawrence in that game because I thought it was just four interceptions. It was four interceptions in the first quarter. Trevor Lawrence, five TDs, so two more than Dak. And three interceptions, one more than Dak. Throws for 505 yards. 505 yards. Has a rating of a 72. And a completion percentage of 60. So, is that a great, was that a great playoff game? By Trevor Lawrence? Versus Dak Prescott? Because the difference there is, you know, they, they fell behind. 27 nothing. You could literally say that but shit, most cases in the playoffs, that's garbage time. But the thing was, you had the Chargers so inept that they only scored three more points the rest of the game. Three more points the rest of the game and allowed some easy, quick scores. They're probably playing prevent. And they catch up and they take the lead and they win. So is Trevor Lawrence's 72 rating versus Dak Prescott's 89, is that better? Is Trevor Lawrence's three TDs, I mean, excuse me, five TDs and uh, 
five interceptions better than the three and two? I'm asking for, I mean, this is a legitimate question. If you're going to go through the argument here, if Dak Prescott's defense d- did what Jacksonville did, Cowboys get the win. And that's how it's hard to say quarterback wins are a quarterback stat. It's not. It's not. You can look through and say Jalen Hurts, yeah, he's winning it. But if the Giants are only scoring seven points, what did you do to have to win? What did you have to do to win? They scored seven points. The 49ers injured quarterback. What did you do to have to win? It wasn't that you scored, you know, had to come from behind and do this, that, and the other. And I know I'll get jacked up and laid up and everything else and told I'm an idiot and just a Dak Prescott fanboy, whatever. But we have to stop this whole thing that it's just the quarterback winning. If it was, then Matthew Stafford would have been winning Super Bowls with the Lions. If it was... You wouldn't see everybody talking about going out and getting free agents to help your roster. You would just say, all I need is the quarterback. It's all I need. It's all I need. And in case you hadn't noticed, the last group of quarterbacks winning Super Bowls since 2017, Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, and Matthew Stafford. That's it. That's the list. So all these guys, you're saying, oh, well, you know, they're great. They ain't one shit either. They ain't done shit either. So we'll we'll, we'll just leave it right there. Okay? We'll just leave it right there. And I will fall on my sword and say, yeah, Jalen Hurts has two playoff wins. But both of them you could put a little asterisk to buy. Just saying. So let's round this off with uh, NFL Network, latest on Cowboys contract issues. That's me screaming at night, wanting to get in a position to get a Super Bowl. And the booze rain down. It's one of the worst playoff games the Cowboys have ever played. Take a little bit more time to digest it completely. Stunned. Remember this feeling. Allow that to be our motivation, our inspiration when we need it. Pressure is privilege. My expectations are so, so high. And high expectations creates higher results. End zone, caught, touchdown. We wouldn't want it any other way. A lot of pressure in Dallas this offseason as Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy both on the final year of their deals. And now this, Dak was seen wearing a walking boot last week while on a vacation in Cabo San Lucas. Now, usually a cowboy in a boot is considered fashion. But in this case, Jeff, what do we know about the situation? Well, I can just tell you that everybody is downplaying this. The Cowboys are saying it is a non-story that this is simply... A situation where Dak Prescott said that the last time he went deep sea fishing that he actually uh, had his foot swell on him, which I've never heard of before. Uh, And uh, I can get behind the whole thing. I just can't get behind that part of it. I mean, Jeff, you know a thing or two about deep sea fishing. Jeff, put on your mic, by the way. It's it's. um... I think it was off yeah, you. That's, that's, yeah, that's put a, that on. That's a normal thing, Laura. That's what we I do. know. Yeah. We can still sort of hear you. It's just, it's it, we got better audio available for the people there. All right. <laughs> as for the Cowboys yeah, defense, it was one of the best in the NFL during Dan Quinn's three seasons as their defensive coordinator. But as Mike Zimmer takes over as the Cowboys DC, one area that he'll look to clean up is penalties. The Cowboys defense was called for 57 penalties last season, third most in the NFL. And that continued a trend from the previous two years. Safety Malik Hooker thinks this defense will be much better on that front this year. These past couple of weeks of having this new system and going out there OTAs and doing everything we've been doing, like you can tell the difference of, I would say, w- discipline that we're going to be this year. Like yeah. it's like, it, like, like you if you watch a lot of our games, like a lot of the big games we lost. I mean, yeah, there were plays made, but a lot of the times we were shooting ourselves in the foot. Interesting. Uh, cleaning up the penalties and playing more disciplined will be a part of the Zimmer redesign. Mina, how else do you think this unit will change this fall with the new DC? Well, 
The biggest problem last year with this defense, which was very good at getting after the quarterback, good in coverage, even after losing Trevon Diggs, who's their number one cornerback to injury, was against the run, struggles against the run. They were 10th in EPA for play against the run, which was sounds good, heel. but 30th in success rate. And what that discrepancy means is while they didn't allow that many explosive runs, on a down-to-down -down basis, teams were able to run the ball on them. So how does Mike Zimmer address that? Some of it, I think, will be uh, with his use of personnel groupings. Uh, this was a defense that lived in sub-packages nickel and dime last year. Some of that had to do with injuries at linebacker. I think we will see more of a base 4-3-4 from Zimmer. He also has to get better play, though, from not just the linebackers. You bring in Eric Kendricks, who's a veteran. You have Demar Barbian Overshone, who had an injury mm -hmm. uh, year loss last season to injury. But their first-round draft pick, Mozzie Smith, defensive tackle, something. he needs to play better. So it's not just about scheme, but also about development if they want to get better at fitting the run. But both definitely matter, to your point, Mina. Development matters, but the scheme matters. And specific to that piece of scheme is the signing of Eric Kendricks. A lot of people, Cowboys fans are saying, man, we didn't sign anybody. What's going on? Eric Kendricks is a great signing. Why? Because he spent his first seven years with Mike Zimmer in Minnesota. So the defense that you see from Minnesota, the defense you're probably going to see with Dallas, that double A-gap mug, two linebackers lined up in the A-gap. You don't know who's going to blitz, who's going to drop into coverage. Eric Kendricks has a deep and keen understanding of that defense. He can help teach it to the other guys on that in the locker room and on that side of the ball. And so I think that sign is going to be big. Trevon Diggs being healthy is going to be big. It'll give Deron Bland an opportunity to continue to make plays. So for me, I think this defense with Mike Zimmer is going to be extremely effective. Yeah, it, just a reminder, Diggs played just two games last season before tearing his ACL in practice in September. Mina, off the top of this segment, we saw just the disappointment from Dallas. They gave up 48 points that defense did against the Packers to be ousted from the playoffs. Just more on what needs to change there in your mind as they look to revamp, especially that side of the ball going into next season. Yeah, Laura, I just rewatched this, trying to yeah. remember why. <laughs> and look, the game got out of hand very quickly. Some of it had to do with uh, Dak Prescott's interceptions. You had to pick six earlier on. So I, that really, I think, um, affected the game script. All of that is true. Uh, but what struck me watching the Cowboys' defense against Green Bay was how much they struggled with motion and play action. And those were issues that popped up from time to time during the regular season, too. Now, a lot of that has to do with the aforementioned lack of linebackers. Uh, this, you think? The Green Bay Packers offense, and you saw some similar offenses with heavy personnel groupings that leaned on using tight ends, really exploit that part of the field. Um, but to me, some of it also has to do with that defense under Dan Quinn having very specific rules that Matt LaFleur was able to exploit in the postseason. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, there you go, which is the truth. You know, on the surface, the Cowboys' defense put up great numbers. The thing was is that was against certain teams. There were certain styles of teams, and we could see the San Francisco 49ers, the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, uh, the Lions, teams that could run the football. Green Bay Packers exploited our defense. We literally just could not stop teams on the ground. And that's the, the Achilles heel for the Cowboys. Um, our linebacking core will definitely be better. The linebacking core will help the defensive line and so forth because it's kind of like the neck bones connected to the backbone and the backbone's connected. You, you know what I'm saying? The linebackers being there and being able to help stop is going to help the defensive line. But you also need that defensive line to be able to help the linebackers. We need Mozzie to be that guy that can clog up the middle and keep the guards off of the linebackers we'll see how it all works out and uh if this year will be better for the cowboys or not but uh we will be there in oxnard in three weeks is it three weeks yeah three weeks i guess it's three weeks what's the day the ninth yeah wow wow i'll catch you guys later peace